You no longer need to buy an expensive DE10 Nano from Terrasic to get your FPGA retro gaming fix. What I have here is an alternative board that clones the DE10 Nano and is offered at a cheaper price. As far as I know, there shouldn't be any legal issues cloning the DE10 Nano because it is based on a reference design by Intel that can be freely used by anyone. Right now, the official DE10 Nano costs $225 and this board comes in at only $99. So how does it perform? Are there any compatibility issues? We'll find out in this video. Before I go further, I want to let you know that I purchased this board with my own money and QM Tech does not even know I created this video, so they haven't had any influence on the making of it. Now let me show you what's included when you get this board. You have the DE10 alternative board, a fan, a mini USB to USB-A cable. Unless you're a developer, you won't need this mini USB to USB-A cable as it's meant to give you access to the Linux console via the mini USB port on the QM Tech board. A power supply. This power supply feels really cheap, but I'm no power supply expert. QM Tech also told me that they recommend only using their power supply as other power supplies have not been tested by them. And there's a 32 gigabyte SD card. Now let me plug everything in. Setup is pretty easy. You will want to have a 128 megabyte SD RAM module in order to take advantage of all the cores. I'll provide a list of Mr. Vendors on where you can obtain these modules. QM Tech says to install the SD RAM into GPI port zero. Now here's a warning. You don't install the SD RAM in the same orientation as a DE10 Nano. RAM modules have a label that tell you which side should be facing outward on the board. For the QM Tech module, you have to flip that orientation for GPIO0 and make the side facing inward instead. If you do not do this, you risk frying your RAM. One of my viewers warned me of this happening to someone else. Also, Bedroom Ninja, who makes some amazing NFC cases for the Tap2 project, almost had their RAM fried because of this confusion. Now for more confusion. GPIO port 1 can be used for a secondary RAM module, but RAM modules installed in that port must be in the opposite orientation of GPIO 0. So if you have a RAM module in GPIO port 1 and port 0, each RAM module must be facing away from each other. Here's the QM Tech manual that shows you how they should be oriented. Confusing, right? It's annoying dealing with these drastic changes in board layout and QM Tech should have really gotten in contact with the community. Current Mr. Owners will also start seeing a problem with this GPIO placement and the issues it will cause with IO boards. I'll discuss the issues with this later in the video. The included SD card already had the Mr. Software installed. However, I'm a little paranoid and would rather format and reinstall the software myself. If you do not know how to do that, then check out my video walking you through the Mr. Software setup. However, I first used an SD card from one of my current Mr. setups and plugged it into this board. This should help me test compatibility. To use USB controllers and accessories, you will need to plug them into the full-size USB-A port on the board. For internet access, you can plug in an ethernet cable into the RJ45 port or you can use a Wi-Fi dongle connected to a hub that's plugged into the USB-A port. If you want, plug in the fan, but I'm going to be looking for a better fan or heatsink because I find this fan to be too loud. Connect an HDMI cable and then plug in the included power supply in the barrel jack and you're ready to go. The Mr. OS will now boot up. Now let me test some cores. I've been using this setup exclusively for almost a week, but I still think I'll need more time with the board and also others need to go through their use cases to really put this board through its paces. Anyway, here's some preliminary testing. PlayStation works fine. I experienced no problems. The Saturn core also worked just as well as a regular DE10 Nano. No issues with the Nintendo 64 core either.
8 and 16 bit consoles work just fine too. I also tried the AO486 core with no differences from a standard DE10 Nano. Those are just some of the cores I tested, and this is by no means exhaustive testing. The way I compared my testing to the DE10 Nano is by playing the first level of some games on the clone board first, and then playing that same first level again on a standard DE10 Nano. I noticed no differences between playing games on the clone board and the DE10 Nano. Here I'm showing the Duke Nukem 3D demo running on the DE10 Nano and the clone board. And when I compare them side by side, they each run exactly at the same time. While testing, most of the time I was just using the QM Tech board to play games as I normally would and just enjoy playing games. I also tested running cores with no RAM module and everything I tried worked and didn't work as I expected. Cores that didn't require the RAM module worked as they should and the cores that do require it didn't work just like a standard DE10 Nano. Since the official analog I.O. boards aren't compatible with this board, I decided to instead use Direct Video to test out CRT gaming. Direct Video worked just fine. I saw no differences when comparing it to a standard DE10 Nano. The connections I tried were composite and component video. One thing to note is that at first, the Direct Video adapter did not work. But when contacting QM Tech support about this, they told me to make sure I have a power supply connected to the Direct Video adapter's micro USB port. On the official DE10 Nano, I didn't need the power supply connected to the Direct Video adapter. But QM Tech told me that their HDMI port follows the HDMI standard and can only provide 50 milliamps of current, which is not enough for the adapter. Now let's talk about the major issue with this board. It's compatibility, or more accurately, lack of compatibility with standard Mr. I.O. and USB boards. I spoke directly with QM Tech support and they said that the official Mr. FPGA I.O. board is not compatible with this board. If you look at the board side by side, you can see that the GPIO header positions are different than the DE10 nanos. The appropriate GPIO pins for the RAM and I.O. board are on opposite sides for the DE10 Nano, but for the QM Tech board, they are on the same side. I don't know what these other GPIO pins are for on the QM Tech board. The other I.O. ports on the sides of the QM Tech board are also arranged differently. For example, the Ethernet port is not aligned in the same position as the DE10 Nano's port. These differences prevent this board from being a drop-in alternative to the many Mr. FPGA cases and I.O. boards. You can probably use a ribbon cable to connect an official I.O. board, but I feel it's just better to wait for QM Tech's accessories. This incompatibility is disappointing and just fragments the Mr. ecosystem. The accessories QM Tech has coming are some custom I.O. and USB boards and a case. Those accessories have not been released as of the making of this video. I plan on getting these boards and I'll give you my thoughts when they arrive. I'm going to now mention some other alternative DE10 Nano boards that you may want to buy instead. QM Tech also created another board that has built-in SD RAM. This one looks to be compatible with Mr. I.O. boards. This post by Grumpy Old Gamer UK shows the standard Mr. FPGA I.O. board attached to it. I do not plan on getting this board because I'm waiting for another board to be released, and that is the board by Taki Udon. I'm really excited for this one. Taki was in contact with the community and with Sorge, the creator of the Mr. Project. So the DE10 Nano alternative that he's developing is going to be compatible with current I.O. and USB boards. As of the making of this video, the board is currently in mass production, but I'm going to purchase one and give you my thoughts. Taki also has other Mr. Products coming in the future, like consoleized misters, some that can use real cartridges, and a portable mister. So that's the QM Tech DE10 Nano alternative. Here are my final thoughts on this board. The good first. Software wise, this board is great. Every core I tried worked out the box, so that's really good. Software like the Tab2 project also worked. It truly was a plug and play setup when I inserted an SD card that was already used on a real DE10 Nano. 
At $99, this is a more affordable option than getting an official DE10 Nano, which will cost you $225. Direct video worked, and USB peripherals like controllers and Wi-Fi adapters all worked without issue. QM Tech support was also good at answering all my questions. Now for the bad. There is still no power switch. The official DE10 Nano also doesn't have one, but it would have been a nice quality of life update, especially since they completely changed the layout of the components. The power supply feels cheap. I'm no electronics expert, but the power supply is really light and the build quality doesn't feel as good as the power supply that comes with the DE10 Nano. The cable for the power supply is also really short. So if you don't have an outlet that's close by, you will need an extension which can affect your cable management. I have not tried a different power supply with this board, but if any of you have, please let me know in the comments. The build quality for this board is suspect. It's very concerning when the manual for this board warns you not to use a metal screw in one of the corners because it can short out the board. A hardware issue I experienced after a week was that if I slightly move the power connector, the device will either shut off or reboot. Maybe the connector got loose after plugging it in and out so many times, but I've done that so much with the regular DE10 Nanos and it's never happened to me. This is another reason why a built-in power switch would be so helpful. It also looks like you can fry your SD RAM if it's inserted in the wrong orientation. And this orientation is different than the one on the DE10 Nano. Check the description for a video where this happened to someone. The fan is loud. While playing games, I found the fan noise distracting. So budget for another fan or heatsink. And the major downside is that it's incompatible with standard Mr. IO boards and accessories. Overall, I don't regret buying this board because the Mr. Software and cores worked as they should. I plan on using this board mostly for video capture and testing new Mr. FPGA features. So should you buy this board? I feel that if you want an FPGA gaming setup that you plan to set aside and never physically change, then I think this is a good option, just as long as you are aware of its limitations. It should be even better when the upcoming I.O. board and case made specifically for this board are released. However, if you want to embrace all the awesome cases and I.O. boards that are available for the Mr. FPGA, then this board is not for you, at least for the moment. Who knows what developments there will be in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.